hey coders how are you all doing today i hope you guys are doing great and welcome to a brand new video where we'll be creating more games on scratch so in today's video we are going to learn how to create our own sprint game in which you have to use the left and right arrow keys to get to the finish line as quickly as possible what you will learn how to animate sprites how to use keyboard input and how to use broadcasts so let's get to the game shall we all right so this is how your game would be at the end of this video so if you click the green flag three two one then you click or press down the right and arrow keys to get to the finish line and there's a timer as well So there we have it. See how fast you can run. So as you can see mine, I've, I've done it for 6.3 seconds at 100 meters. So let's start with the game, shall we? All right, so you should have your scratch resources or the sprint resources starter world opened. So what we're gonna do is now start coding our program. So the first thing or the first step we need to do is create a race countdown. So let's start with the code for our finish line. We go to events, drag out when green flag clicked. And just increase this so you guys will be able to see. Go to motion, drag out the go to X and Y block. The X value is zero. The Y value is 30. And we're going to go to looks and drag out set size to 1%. There we go. So if you click the green flag to test your code, you'll see your finish line in the distance right here. Next, we're going to use a save block to create a countdown and then broadcast uh, a start message all right guys so i've just realized my x value is supposed to be zero and my y value is supposed to be 30. so if i click the green flag it should appear right there all right so make sure the values are zero for x and y is 30. so now we're going to add a say block for two seconds, three of them. So it's going to be a countdown of three for one second, two for one second, and one for one second. And then we're going to go to events, drag out broadcast message. And instead of message one, we're going to click on new message and type in there start. You can also add a sound to your countdown. So let's go to sound. And we want the siren whistle sound. So say st drag out start sound and put it in between the broadcast and the lost save block. The next step we need to do is move the finish line when the arrow keys are pressed. So you want to allow the player to press the arrow keys until they have run 100 meters. To do this, we're going to create a new variable called distance. So we go to variables, click on make a variable and call this distance. Distance. You should see your new variable on the stage. Drag it to the top right hand corner. It should be right over here. Then we're going to set the distance to zero when the green flag is clicked. So we're going to set distance to zero. Now, once you start uh, your race, your player should sprint until they have run 100 meters. So we're going to go to uh, events. Just going to put this side. And we're going to drag out when I receive start, go to control, drag out repeat until, 
go to operators and drag out the equals to and in the first block we're going to drag in distance equals to a hundred so add code so that your finish line gets a little bigger after the player presses the left arrow the distance should also increase so now we're going to go to control and then we're going to drag out wait until put it inside the repeat and uh, repeat until block go to sensing drag out the key pressed uh, block and change it to left arrow and then go to looks and drag out change size by one and then go to variables and change distance by one so now click the green flag to test your project you should see that the finish line gets bigger when the left arrow is pressed but doesn't move along the track green arrow three two one there we go to fix this you can add to add code to move the finish line down slightly each time a key is pressed so we're going to go to motion and drag out change y and put it in between the change size and the change distance so that it becomes minus 1.5 so test your project again and you should see the finish line move down the stage towards you three two one down towards you there we go you should then do the same for the right arrow key so we're going to go to control drag out wait until go to sensing key change it to right arrow Repeat what you did in the first block. So change size. Oh, sorry. Change uh, change size by one. Motion. Change x. I mean change y. Sorry. Change y by minus 1.5. Variables. Change distance by one. Now, if you click to see the finish lines costume you should see that there are two so you go to costumes and you should see two normal and broken you can switch to the broken costume and end the game at the end of the race remember remember to switch to the normal costume at the start of the race so we're going to go to code and right underneath when I start as a project, or when I when I receive start, not when I receive a project. Sorry, guys. When I receive start, go to looks, drag out switch costume two, and say broken. And then it should stop all, which is in the control block. Drag out stop all. And remember, we want the normal one to be in the beginning. So we'll go to looks, and switch costume two, normal. Now, if you want to play a sound at the end, you'll have change your stop all block to stop other scripts in Sprite. This means that the timer you create will stop counting, but the sound will still play. So where we've, where we've said stop all, we should click here and say stop other scripts in Sprite. Go to sound and drag out start sound. And instead of a siren whistle, we get cheer. Have you noticed that you can cheat your game by just holding down the left and right arrow? To fix this, you need to make sure that each key is pressed and then released before moving the finish line. So in order to do that, we're going to, instead it being this, we're going to go to operators and drag out the not block and replace it right there we do the same with the right arrow uh, 
All right. So now the next step is who is the fastest? So we're going to add a timer to the game to see who can sprint the, fa the fastest. So we go to variables. We create a variable called time. And it will appear on the stage. Drag it to the top left hand corner right over here. Then we're going to set the time to zero at the start of the game. So we go set time to zero. And then we're going to add this code to make our timer count up when the game starts. So we're going to need another uh, event. So we're going to drag out when I receive start. Go to control, drag out the forever loop. And inside the forever loop, the wait block. And go to variables, drag out change. Change it to time by 0 0.1. So we're going to test your project by clicking the green flag. And you should see your timer counting up until you sprint 100 meters. So green flag, 3, 2, 1. All right. We're getting there. We're getting there. There we go. 0 0.8 all right perfect so now the next thing we need to do is add scenery so let's code the tree to move as the player sprints so we're going to click on tree one and we're going to go to event drag out when green flag clicked go to looks drag out the show block it's down here show then we're going to be in motion and drag out the go to x and y value block and change the values of x to minus 50 y value to 20 and then go back to looks and drag out set size to should be one percent so once the race starts the tree should move until the player has sprinted a hundred meters so we're going to go to events, drag out when I receive start, go to control, drag out, repeat until, go to operators, get the equals to, variable, drag out distance, equals to 100. Once the left key has been pressed and released, the tree should get bigger and move, just like the finish line. So we're going to go to control, drag out two wait until blocks for left and right. And then we're going to have for this part, it will be for left arrow. So sensing, drag out key, left arrow, wait until, go to operators, grab not left arrow oops that's right arrow i mean to say left arrow then we go to looks have the change size by one change size by one go to motion and drag out change y by minus 1.5 so if you test your tree, you will see that it moves downwards onto the track. Three, two, one. Downwards. If we're just clicking. All right. So to fix this, add code to make your tree move away from the track slightly. So now we're going to have the change x value right here change x by minus two so you should also do the same for the right arrow key here is how the tree would look like so we'll we'll have the two blocks right here all right so you'll have 
for the left arrow and the right arrow. So all you had, all you need to do if is if you want that whole code, you would right click, duplicate, and have that code. All right. So we can delete these two. Yeah. Well. Sorry, guys. Mm. All right. There we go. All right. So now, one last thing we need to do is have a spect uh, a spectator. So you guys can do this. You can have a spectator at the end of your video or your project. But now we have come to the uh, end of our video. Let us test out this game and see how it plays out. So a view full screen. Click the green flag. Three, two, one. All right. Perfect. So that's how it works. Thanks for your time. Please visit us at www.pingacademy.co.za where we'll be creating more games like these. See you guys in a bit.